This is the S75 Davina, or as NATO calls it, the SA-2 Guideline surface-to-air missile. The missile itself is said to have anywhere from nine major variants up to 23 sub-variants. Just over 10 metres long, weighs about uh, 2.3 tonnes. Went into development in the early 50s, and by about uh, December 1957 it came into service. This was after it actually appeared in the uh, Soviet May Day Parade. The missile was one of the most mass-produced surface-to-air missile systems and it provided a very good high-altitude uh, missile defence system for the Soviets and also along the way to other countries that they sold them to. So when it came into the service in 1957, the first engagement that was said to have was against a Taiwanese Canberra reconnaissance plane. So Captain Ying Ching Wang was obviously the first guy who a missile launched at him with one of these, although the Chinese do deny that they ever fired a missile at him and shot down by fighter aircraft. 1st of May 1960 with uh, Francis Gary Powers in the U-2 spy plane, uh, being shot down over the Soviet Union. It was said that there was about 14 missiles that were shot at this uh, aircraft along the way. So if we look at 14 missiles, that's at least three batteries of these missiles that had to be fired to get anywhere near him. Six missiles in a battalion with another six missiles on the trucks ready to go. So these were set up in a hexagonal formation anywhere between 60 to 100 metres apart. Now the US could quite easily pick up these SAM sites because of the way they were set up. So they come up very nice on uh, photographic evidence and they can pick these sites out as, as clear as day. Now it has two stages when we want to fire this rocket. First stage at the back, this is our solid fuel booster. This gives us an initial boost of between two to five seconds of uh, thrust on launch. And at this particular time, it cannot turn whilst it's using this booster. Once we uh, burn that out, the back end jettisons. And when that jettisons, the liquid fuel booster kicks in. And this can burn anywhere up to about 22 seconds. If it doesn't detect its target accurately, it will self-destruct at about 115 seconds. So once it's launched, we're talking about a, a linear distance. We can go anywhere between 20 to 27 kilometers in terms of height. Between the models, so if we look at Francis Gary Powers when he got shot down, that was 65,000 feet, but these with later models can go up to about 82,000 feet. The fins in the centre of the missile and the fins at the back, they actually control the roll of the missile in flight. So these little fins here, these are actually the fins that turn the missile in flight. At about 10 kilometres from launch, uh, it has a maximum turn of about 7 Gs. And once we get out to about that 20 kilometre mark, we've only got a maximum turn of about 2 Gs. So the further it goes out, the less it can actually physically turn. Missile once in flight, once the booster has separated, can reach speeds of maximum of uh, Mach 3.5, which equates to about 4,321 kilometres an hour. It can hold this speed for about 22 seconds. Along the underneath of the missile is a lot of its antenna array. Now, depending on which model, uh, you can have uh, of anywhere up to four to eight uh, different antennas along the bottom of this missile. The front, we have a lot of its uh, radar receiving components. This portion here contains almost uh, a 200 kilogram warhead. Now, when this explodes, it fragments into about 8,200 pieces. Now, at a low altitude, it's said to have about a, uh, around about a 60 odd meter kill radius. Once we get out to high altitude, we can go out to over a 200 metre kill radius. So this is the PR-11M trailer. It can hold about two and a half tonnes. This handle here is to actually slide the missile onto its launcher system, the PM-63 or PM-90. As we come to this component here, this is the turntable. So this is just the carrier for the missile. This turns 90 degrees and then the missile can be loaded onto the launcher itself. Other component, if we look up the front here, we've got a fuel cell, so we can actually fuel up the rocket system with its liquid fuel. So as we move forward, we go into the truck. So this is the Zil 157K or KV, or this truck is about 40 different variants. So the figures that were produced for this uh, particular vehicle for the K or KV can be anywhere up to sort of that 160,000, but over the whole model range, we're looking at 950,000 uh, across the board. 104 horsepower engine, six cylinder, so it can go about 40 kilometers an hour on road. This also has the central tire uh, inflation system. Just right down the bottom there, we have six valves, so we can independently raise or lower the pressure of the, uh, the tires. 
I believe there's still about eight countries that use this missile. Within its service when it, when it came out, it was a very effective missile. And as we would have seen in uh, Vietnam, the Vietnamese used this missile system. They fired in excess of about 5,200 missiles, said to have knocked out about 205 uh, US aircraft. So the Americans obviously developed a lot of electronic warfare measures to defeat this missile along the way. And by about 1972, I think it is, the actual hit rate for American aircraft only went down to about 3%. For a most mass-produced missile system, high altitude, very good missile for its time.